Hello, history enthusiasts, time travelers, and knowledge seekers. Welcome to another journey back in time here on Backdrop History. Introduction Cleopatra VII, the last pharaoh of Egypt, remains one of history's most captivating figures. Her reign, marked by political prowess, strategic alliances, and passionate love affairs, unfolded during a time of great upheaval in the ancient world. This account delves into the life and death of Cleopatra, exploring the events, personalities, and circumstances that shaped her fate. Through meticulous research and analysis, we aim to shed light on the complexities of Cleopatra's reign, her relationships, and the dramatic events surrounding her demise. Chapter 1, Origins and Early Life Cleopatra's journey as the last pharaoh of Egypt began with her birth in 69 BC into the Ptolemaic dynasty, which had ruled Egypt for nearly three centuries. Understanding Cleopatra's origins requires delving into the complex web of familial relationships and power struggles within the Ptolemaic dynasty. The Ptolemies, descendants of Ptolemy I Soter, a general of Alexander the Great, had established themselves as the rulers of Egypt after Alexander's death. However, the dynasty was not without its internal conflicts and rivalries. Cleopatra's family, in particular, was marred by a long history of power struggles and bitter infighting. Cleopatra was born into the Ptolemaic lineage, with her father being Ptolemy XII Alites, commonly known as the Piper. Ptolemy XII faced numerous challenges to his authority during his reign, including revolts and external threats to Egypt's sovereignty. His rule was marked by financial difficulties, corruption, and a decline in Egypt's power and influence. Cleopatra's mother remains a subject of debate among historians. Some suggest that she was Cleopatra v. Trifonina, Ptolemy XI's sister-wife, while others argue that she was a woman named Cleopatra VI, another sister-wife. Regardless of her mother's identity, Cleopatra's lineage was firmly rooted in the Ptolemaic dynasty. From an early age, Cleopatra was exposed to the intricate power dynamics of the Ptolemaic court. She witnessed firsthand the consequences of familial rivalries and political maneuvering. This environment would shape her understanding of power, diplomacy, and the importance of alliances. Cleopatra's education was of paramount importance in preparing her for her future role as a ruler. She received a rigorous education, focusing on various disciplines, including languages, mathematics, philosophy, and political theory. She studied the works of renowned scholars and philosophers, expanding her intellectual horizons. Furthermore, Cleopatra's education exposed her to a rich tapestry of cultures. Egypt, as a vibrant crossroads of trade and civilization, attracted scholars, merchants, and diplomats from across the ancient world. Cleopatra engaged with individuals from diverse backgrounds, including Greeks, Romans, Syrians, and Egyptians. This multicultural exposure allowed her to develop a nuanced understanding of different societies, customs, and traditions. Her linguistic abilities were a testament to her education. Cleopatra was reputedly fluent in multiple languages, including Greek, Egyptian, and Latin. This linguistic prowess would prove invaluable in her interactions with foreign dignitaries and in establishing diplomatic ties. In addition to her formal education, Cleopatra was also exposed to the practicalities of governance. She observed her father's struggles and learned firsthand about the challenges of ruling a kingdom beset by internal and external pressures. These experiences instilled in her a sense of responsibility and an awareness of the fragility of political power. The early influences in Cleopatra's life played a crucial role in shaping her future as a ruler. Her exposure to diverse cultures and her education fostered a cosmopolitan worldview, enabling her to navigate the complexities of diplomacy and maintain the stability of her kingdom. Chapter 2 The Rise to Power 
Cleopatra's rise to power marked a pivotal moment in the history of Egypt. As she ascended to the throne, she faced a myriad of challenges in a politically volatile climate. This chapter examines the early years of her reign, the complex political landscape of Egypt, and the obstacles she encountered in consolidating her power. Upon assuming the throne, Cleopatra faced immediate opposition from within her own family. Ptolemaic succession was traditionally marked by sibling rivalries and power struggles, and Cleopatra was no exception to this pattern. Her younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, became her co-ruler, but their relationship quickly deteriorated into a bitter power struggle. Cleopatra's first strategic maneuver was to align herself with influential figures who could support her claim to sole rulership. She recognized the need for strong alliances and sought to secure them both within Egypt and beyond its borders. Her initial alliance was forged with her advisor, Ptolemy XII's former general, Pothinus. However, Pothinus soon became a formidable adversary, manipulating her brother against her. Realizing the need for additional support, Cleopatra sought an alliance with the powerful Roman Republic. In 48 BCE, she famously smuggled herself into Julius Caesar's presence in Alexandria, concealed within a rolled-up carpet. This bold move not only showcased her resourcefulness but also initiated a significant turning point in her rise to power. Cleopatra's relationship with Julius Caesar proved to be a defining factor in her ascent. The Roman general saw in Cleopatra a potential ally who could help secure Egypt as a Roman client state and provide him with valuable resources. Their connection went beyond political necessity, and a passionate love affair ensued, leading to the birth of their son, Caesarion. Cleopatra strategically used her relationship with Caesar to solidify her position in Egypt. She accompanied him to Rome, presenting herself as his queen and forging alliances with influential figures. Her presence in Rome, combined with Caesar's support, further legitimized her claim to the Egyptian throne and solidified her image as a powerful ruler. However, the political landscape dramatically shifted with Caesar's assassination in 44 BCE. Cleopatra faced new challenges as power struggles erupted in Rome, leaving her vulnerable. To secure her position and the future of her kingdom, Cleopatra needed to form new alliances. Mark Antony, one of Caesar's most trusted generals and a key figure in the subsequent power struggle, emerged as Cleopatra's next influential ally. Their relationship mirrored the intensity and passion of her connection with Caesar. Together, they formed a formidable partnership, both politically and romantically. Cleopatra's alliance with Antony allowed her to solidify her control over Egypt while extending her influence over the eastern territories of the Roman Empire. Together, they embarked on military campaigns, aiming to expand their power and counter their rivals. However, these campaigns faced setbacks and strained their alliance as conflicts and political rivalries continued to unfold. Despite the challenges and complexities of Egyptian and Roman politics, Cleopatra's political acumen and strategic maneuvering allowed her to navigate the treacherous waters of power successfully. She skillfully negotiated alliances, leveraged her relationships, and employed her intelligence to consolidate her power and maintain stability in Egypt. By the time of Antony's defeat at the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE, Cleopatra had established herself as the undisputed ruler of Egypt. Her ability to adapt to changing circumstances, forge influential alliances, and navigate the tumultuous political landscape exemplified her prowess as a leader. Chapter 3 – Alliance with Julius Caesar Cleopatra's alliance with Julius Caesar, one of the most prominent figures in ancient Rome, played a pivotal role in shaping her life and the destiny of Egypt. This chapter delves into the intricate dynamics of their relationship, the geopolitical ramifications of their alliance, and the strategic advantages Cleopatra gained through her association with Caesar. 
The meeting between Cleopatra and Julius Caesar in 48 BCE marked the beginning of a legendary affair that would change the course of history. At the time, Caesar was embroiled in the Roman Civil War, facing off against his rival, Pompey the Great. Seeking support and resources for his campaign, Caesar arrived in Alexandria, where Cleopatra, then just 21 years old, was co-ruling Egypt with her younger brother, Ptolemy XIII. Cleopatra recognized the opportunity presented by Caesar's arrival and the chaos within the Roman Republic. She understood that aligning herself with a powerful Roman leader like Caesar could help secure her position as the sole ruler of Egypt. Her resourcefulness and determination were on full display when she famously presented herself to Caesar, concealed within a rolled-up carpet, symbolizing her willingness to be at his disposal. Caesar was captivated by Cleopatra's intelligence, charm, and charisma. Their connection went beyond political expediency, evolving into a passionate love affair. Cleopatra's presence in Caesar's life served multiple purposes. Firstly, it solidified her status as a legitimate ruler and ally, further legitimizing her claim to the Egyptian throne. Secondly, it ensured her position as a key player in the political affairs of Rome, elevating her influence and securing her role in the tumultuous events unfolding within the Roman Republic. Cleopatra's association with Caesar had significant geopolitical implications. By aligning herself with the most powerful man in Rome, she gained access to Roman resources and military support, bolstering her position against her rivals. Caesar's backing provided Cleopatra with a means to counter the machinations of her brother and other factions within Egypt who opposed her rule. Furthermore, Cleopatra's presence in Rome during this period had a profound impact on both the Roman political scene and the perception of Egypt in the eyes of the Romans. She lived openly as Caesar's companion, effectively becoming the first foreign queen to have a public presence in Rome. This audacious move challenged Roman traditions and norms while simultaneously solidifying Cleopatra's status as a significant player on the international stage. Cleopatra's role in the Roman Civil War was equally influential. Her relationship with Caesar positioned her as a potential intermediary between the warring factions, allowing her to leverage her influence to secure Roman support for her cause. Her political astuteness became evident when she persuaded Caesar to back her claim to the Egyptian throne, resulting in a military campaign against her brother, Ptolemy XIII, and his supporters. This ultimately led to Cleopatra being established as the sole ruler of Egypt. Cleopatra's alliance with Caesar not only secured her position in Egypt, but also granted her a voice in the affairs of Rome. She used her influence to advocate for the interests of Egypt, seeking favorable policies and agreements that would benefit her kingdom. Her presence in Rome created a dynamic and intricate network of political alliances and rivalries, shaping the course of events during a critical period in Roman history. Chapter 4, Antony and Cleopatra After the assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BCE, Cleopatra's path took another dramatic turn as she forged a profound alliance with Mark Antony, one of Caesar's most trusted generals. This chapter explores the intricate dynamics of the relationship between Cleopatra and Antony, their mutual love, shared ambitions, military campaigns, and the shifting balance of power in the Roman Empire. Following Caesar's death, Rome plunged into a state of political chaos and power struggles. Mark Antony emerged as one of the key figures vying for control, aligning himself with Caesar's supporters and forming the Second Triumvirate alongside Octavian, Caesar's adopted heir, and Lepidus. Recognizing Antony's military might and political influence, Cleopatra sought to secure her position by establishing a close alliance with him. Cleopatra's association with Antony was marked not only by political expediency but also by a deep and passionate love affair. The union of the powerful Egyptian queen and the Roman general became a symbol of their shared ambitions and a consolidation of their individual strengths. 
Their relationship transcended political necessity, evolving into a partnership fueled by love, desire, and mutual respect. The alliance between Antony and Cleopatra had far-reaching consequences, both politically and militarily. Together, they aimed to solidify their control over the Roman Empire and establish a new order. Cleopatra's resources, wealth, and strategic insights complemented Antony's military prowess, creating a formidable force that threatened the established power structures. One of the defining aspects of Antony and Cleopatra's partnership was their joint military campaigns. Cleopatra provided Antony with crucial resources, including ships, troops, and financial support, to aid his military endeavors. Their combined forces aimed to expand their territories and assert their dominance in the eastern Mediterranean, challenging Octavian's authority in Rome. Their most notable military campaign was the Parthian War of 36 BCE, in which Antony sought to avenge Rome's previous defeats and re-establish Roman authority in the east. Cleopatra actively participated in the campaign, providing significant naval and financial support. Despite initial victories, the campaign ended in a costly defeat for Antony, further straining his relationship with Octavian and shifting the balance of power in Rome. The relationship between Antony and Cleopatra also had profound political implications. Their union was perceived as a threat to the established Roman order, with Octavian viewing Antony's actions as a challenge to his authority. Octavian skillfully capitalized on public sentiment, portraying Antony as under the influence of a foreign queen and accusing him of neglecting his Roman duties. This political manipulation set the stage for the climactic clash between Octavian and Antony. In 31 BCE, the forces of Octavian and Antony met at the Battle of Actium. Despite Cleopatra's military contributions and Antony's experience as a commander, they suffered a decisive defeat. This defeat marked a turning point in their alliance and ultimately led to their downfall. After the battle, Antony and Cleopatra retreated to Egypt, where they attempted to regroup and defy Octavian's advances. However, their fortunes continued to decline. As Octavian closed in on Alexandria, Cleopatra and Antony faced internal strife, with desertions and betrayals further weakening their position. The final act of Antony and Cleopatra's tragic tale unfolded in 30 BCE. Facing certain defeat and capture, Antony took his own life. Devastated by Antony's death, Cleopatra followed suit, embracing the tradition of royal suicide. With her death, the era of the Ptolemaic dynasty came to a close. The alliance between Antony and Cleopatra, characterized by love, ambition, and military campaigns, left an indelible mark on history. Their partnership challenged the authority of Rome and threatened the established power structures of the Roman Empire. Despite their ultimate defeat, Antony and Cleopatra remain iconic figures whose love affair and political aspirations continue to captivate audiences to this day. Chapter 5 – The Fall of Cleopatra The fall of Cleopatra, the last pharaoh of Egypt, unfolded against the backdrop of a changing Roman Empire and the growing rivalry between Octavian, later Emperor Augustus, and Mark Antony. This chapter explores the events leading to the Battle of Actium, the circumstances surrounding Cleopatra and Antony's defeat, and their subsequent retreat to Egypt. By the mid-1st century BCE, the Roman Republic was facing internal strife and political instability. The Second Triumvirate, formed by Octavian, Mark Antony, and Lepidus, had initially provided a semblance of stability. However, tensions between Octavian and Antony began to escalate, fueled by personal ambitions and competing claims to power. As Octavian consolidated his position in Rome, his relationship with Antony deteriorated. Antony's alliance with Cleopatra, viewed by many Romans as a challenge to Roman sovereignty, further strained his ties with Octavian. Octavian skillfully capitalized on public sentiment, 
painting Antony as being under the influence of a foreign queen and neglecting his Roman responsibilities. The rivalry between Octavian and Antony reached its climax with the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE. The conflict was the culmination of years of political maneuvering and military build-up. Octavian, commanding a formidable fleet and supported by experienced generals, sought to defeat Antony and Cleopatra, both on a military and symbolic level. The circumstances leading to the battle were complex. Antony and Cleopatra had retreated to Egypt after suffering defeats in previous campaigns. Their forces, though weakened, still possessed significant resources and military strength. Cleopatra's naval fleet, renowned for its capabilities, presented a formidable challenge to Octavian's forces. The Battle of Actium unfolded off the western coast of Greece. Octavian's superior tactics and disciplined forces gave him the advantage. Antony and Cleopatra's fleet suffered a devastating defeat, and their hopes of retaining control over the Roman Empire were shattered. The battle marked a turning point in the struggle for power, as Octavian emerged as the sole ruler of Rome. Following their defeat at Actium, Antony and Cleopatra retreated to Egypt. The circumstances surrounding their retreat were marked by internal strife and betrayals. Cleopatra's position within her own kingdom was undermined, with factions within Egypt questioning her rule and loyalty. Facing certain capture and recognizing the implications of falling into Octavian's hands, Antony took his own life in 30 BCE. Devastated by Antony's death, Cleopatra resolved to follow suit. The queen, aware of her status as a symbol of Egyptian power and independence, chose to embrace the tradition of royal suicide, ending her life rather than submitting to Octavian's authority. The fall of Cleopatra marked the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty, which had ruled Egypt for over three centuries. It also solidified Octavian's position as the undisputed leader of Rome, leading to the establishment of the Roman Empire and his eventual ascent as Emperor Augustus. The events surrounding Cleopatra's fall had profound implications for the Roman Empire and the legacy of the Egyptian queen. Cleopatra's alliance with Antony and her defiance of Octavian challenged the established order of Rome, embodying a struggle for power, independence, and the preservation of Egyptian identity. Cleopatra's tragic demise further solidified her status as an enduring figure of fascination and intrigue. Her story, fraught with political rivalries, alliances, and personal ambitions, continues to captivate audiences and serve as a reminder of the complex and often tragic nature of power and its consequences. Chapter 6, The Tragic End The final chapter of Cleopatra's life explores the circumstances surrounding her death, delving into the series of events that unfolded after the Battle of Actium. This chapter examines Octavian's pursuit of Cleopatra, the fall of Alexandria, the fateful decisions made by Cleopatra and Antony, the various theories surrounding Cleopatra's death, and the enduring legacy of this iconic queen. After the devastating defeat at the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE, Cleopatra and Antony retreated to Egypt. Octavian, now the undisputed leader of Rome, pursued them with the intent of capturing and bringing them back to Rome as trophies of his victory. Cleopatra, aware of the implications of falling into Octavian's hands, resolved to preserve her dignity and independence. The fall of Alexandria marked the final stage of Cleopatra's tragic journey. As Octavian's forces closed in on the city, Cleopatra and Antony found themselves increasingly isolated and besieged. Internal strife and betrayals within Egypt further weakened their position. In this precarious situation, Cleopatra made a fateful decision. She sought to negotiate with Octavian, hoping to secure her future and the future of her children. However, Octavian, driven by his desire for complete control, was determined to see Cleopatra brought back to Rome as a captive. Faced with the prospect of humiliation and the loss of her kingdom, Cleopatra made a final, momentous choice. 
she resolved to take her own life, embracing the tradition of royal suicide. Cleopatra, aware of her status as a symbol of Egyptian power and independence, chose death over surrender. The exact circumstances of Cleopatra's death have been the subject of speculation and debate. According to historical accounts, Cleopatra died on August 12 or 13, 30 BCE. The most widely accepted version of events suggests that she used an ASP, a venomous snake, to end her life. It is said that she concealed the serpent within a basket of figs, which was brought to her by a trusted servant. The story of Cleopatra's death by snakebite has become legendary and is often portrayed in art and literature. However, alternative theories and accounts have emerged over the centuries. Some historians argue that Cleopatra died by poison, administered by her own hand or by the order of Octavian. Others suggest that she may have used a different method, such as drinking poison or suffocation. The true circumstances of Cleopatra's death may never be definitively known, as the primary sources from the time were limited and often biased. Octavian, who became Emperor Augustus, controlled the narrative of Cleopatra's demise, and his accounts may have been colored by political motivations. Nevertheless, the story of Cleopatra's tragic end has captivated imaginations and inspired countless interpretations. Cleopatra's death marked the end of an era, both for Egypt and for the ancient world. With her demise, the Ptolemaic dynasty, which had ruled Egypt for over three centuries, came to an end. Egypt became a province of the Roman Empire, and its cultural and political landscape underwent significant transformations. The legacy of Cleopatra endures to this day. She is remembered as a brilliant and charismatic ruler who defied convention and challenged the might of Rome. Cleopatra's intelligence, political acumen, and ability to navigate treacherous waters of power have made her an iconic figure of strength and resilience. Moreover, Cleopatra's story has inspired countless works of literature, art, and drama, cementing her status as one of history's most fascinating and enduring figures. Her tragic end, marked by her determination to preserve her independence and her refusal to be a captive of Rome, has become a symbol of defiance and the pursuit of freedom. Chapter 7, Conclusion Cleopatra's life and death represent a captivating and complex narrative intricately woven into the political landscape of the ancient world. Through this comprehensive account, we have delved into the triumphs and tribulations of a remarkable ruler who defied convention and left an indelible mark on history. Cleopatra's intelligence, charisma, and ability to navigate the turbulent waters of power continue to captivate, fascinate, and inspire generations, cementing her status as a timeless figure whose legacy endures to this day. Cleopatra's journey began within the tumultuous Ptolemaic dynasty, a ruling lineage marked by familial rivalries, power struggles, and the ebb and flow of political fortunes. Born into this intricate web of intrigue, Cleopatra defied the odds, emerging as a formidable leader who sought to consolidate her power and secure the future of Egypt. Her early life experiences, including her education, exposure to diverse cultures, and the complexities of her family background, played instrumental roles in shaping her as a ruler. The alliances she forged, particularly with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, would become defining moments in her life. Her association with Caesar, characterized by a passionate love affair and strategic maneuvering, allowed her to establish herself as a prominent political figure both in Egypt and in Rome. The alliance with Antony, marked by their shared ambitions and mutual love, further solidified her position as a leader and propelled her into the heart of Roman politics. Cleopatra's influence extended beyond her personal relationships. She actively engaged in military campaigns, offering her resources, naval fleet, and financial support to her allies. 
Her strategic prowess and political acumen allowed her to navigate the intricate web of alliances and rivalries, challenging the established order and seeking to secure her kingdom's independence and power. However, the fall of Cleopatra and the demise of the Ptolemaic dynasty were inevitable. The Battle of Actium and subsequent events marked the unraveling of her ambitions and dreams. Antony's defeat, internal strife, and Octavian's relentless pursuit led Cleopatra to make the tragic decision to take her own life. While the exact circumstances of her death remain shrouded in mystery and controversy, her defiance and determination in the face of certain capture solidified her place as an iconic figure of strength and independence. Cleopatra's legacy transcends her tragic end. Her intelligence, political acumen, and ability to navigate the treacherous waters of power continue to inspire scholars, artists, and individuals across the globe. Her story has been retold in countless works of literature, art, and drama, each interpretation highlighting different aspects of her complex personality and the historical context in which she lived. Cleopatra's enduring appeal lies in her ability to challenge societal norms and assert her authority in a male-dominated world. She defied expectations, leveraging her intelligence, wit, and charm to wield power and influence. Her cultural and intellectual pursuits, fluency in multiple languages, and cosmopolitan worldview further distinguish her as a visionary leader who sought to bridge cultures and create a legacy that extended beyond the borders of Egypt. More Information and Facts Part 1, Cleopatra's Cultural and Artistic Patronage Cleopatra's cultural and artistic patronage played a significant role in shaping the cultural landscape of Egypt during her reign. As a ruler, she actively supported and promoted the arts, literature, and architecture, leaving a lasting impact on the revival of ancient Egyptian culture. By exploring her contributions to the cultural landscape of Egypt, we can gain a deeper understanding of her reign and her efforts to revive the grandeur of ancient Egypt. Cleopatra's patronage of the arts encompassed various forms, including sculpture, painting, and architecture. She commissioned numerous artistic works that celebrated her reign and sought to reinforce the image of Egypt as a culturally rich and sophisticated kingdom. Cleopatra's support extended to both local Egyptian artists and visiting artists from Greece and Rome, fostering an environment of artistic exchange and innovation. One of the most notable examples of Cleopatra's artistic patronage was her support of architectural projects. She funded the construction and restoration of public buildings, temples, and monuments, contributing to the embellishment of cities and the preservation of ancient Egyptian heritage. Cleopatra's reign witnessed the revival of monumental architecture and the resurgence of traditional Egyptian architectural styles, which had a lasting impact on the visual identity of the era. Cleopatra's patronage also extended to literature and scholarship. She recognized the importance of intellectual pursuits and the power of literature in shaping public opinion and perpetuating her own image. Cleopatra actively supported poets, writers, and scholars, encouraging them to produce works that celebrated her reign and the cultural achievements of Egypt. Her court became a vibrant center of intellectual exchange, attracting renowned poets and scholars from across the Mediterranean world. The revival of ancient Egyptian culture was a central theme of Cleopatra's patronage. She sought to revive the traditions, religious practices, and artistic styles of ancient Egypt, emphasizing Egypt's unique cultural heritage. Cleopatra's interest in ancient Egyptian culture extended beyond mere aesthetics. She embraced the rituals, symbolism, and iconography of ancient Egyptian religion, presenting herself as a pharaoh in the tradition of her ancestors. Cleopatra's patronage of the arts and her emphasis on reviving ancient Egyptian culture served multiple purposes. Firstly, it allowed her to establish her legitimacy as a ruler, linking herself to the powerful dynasties of the past and presenting herself as a guardian of Egypt's ancient heritage. 
By aligning herself with ancient Egypt, Cleopatra sought to solidify her position as a true pharaoh and reinforce the idea of Egypt as a unique and independent kingdom. Secondly, Cleopatra's cultural and artistic patronage served as a tool for diplomacy and propaganda. Through her support of artists, intellectuals, and architectural projects, she aimed to impress foreign dignitaries, showcase the wealth and grandeur of Egypt, and project an image of power and sophistication. Cleopatra recognized the importance of cultural diplomacy in maintaining alliances and influencing public opinion, both within Egypt and in the wider Mediterranean world. Furthermore, Cleopatra's patronage of the arts had economic implications. The flourishing of artistic and cultural activities under her reign created employment opportunities for artists, artisans, and craftsmen. The construction of public buildings and monuments stimulated the local economy and contributed to the prosperity of cities such as Alexandria. It is important to note that Cleopatra's cultural and artistic patronage did not occur in isolation. Rather, it took place within a broader historical context shaped by Hellenistic and Roman influences. Cleopatra's reign witnessed the fusion of Egyptian, Greek, and Roman artistic styles, resulting in a unique blend of cultural expressions that reflected the cosmopolitan nature of the era. While the physical remnants of Cleopatra's architectural projects and artistic commissions may be limited, her patronage and emphasis on the revival of ancient Egyptian culture left a lasting impact on the cultural landscape of Egypt. Her support of the arts, literature, and architecture contributed to the preservation and reimagining of ancient Egyptian heritage, allowing future generations to appreciate and study the rich cultural legacy of this fascinating era. Part 2 – Cleopatra's Role as a Mother Cleopatra's role as a mother adds a fascinating layer of complexity to her character and provides insight into her personal life and motivations. While her relationships with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony are well documented, exploring her maternal instincts, the relationships she fostered with her children, and the impact of motherhood on her decision-making deepens our understanding of Cleopatra as a multifaceted individual. Cleopatra's most famous child was Caesarion, her son with Julius Caesar. As a mother, Cleopatra likely held immense affection for Caesarion, considering him not only as her child, but also as the heir to the Egyptian and Roman empires. The birth of Caesarion cemented Cleopatra's status as a legitimate heir to the Ptolemaic dynasty, as he embodied the union of the Egyptian and Roman worlds. Cleopatra's role as a mother to Caesarion would have influenced her decision-making, as she sought to secure his position and protect his future. In addition to Caesarion, Cleopatra had children with Mark Antony. Their twin children, Alexander Helios and Cleopatra Selene, and their youngest son, Ptolemy Philadelphus, were born during Cleopatra's relationship with Antony. Cleopatra's role as a mother to her children with Antony further complicated her personal and political life. She had to navigate the complexities of raising children in the midst of intense political rivalries and power struggles. Cleopatra's relationships with her children would have been shaped by her dual role as a mother and a ruler. As a ruler, she would have instilled in her children a sense of duty, preparing them for future leadership roles and ensuring the continuity of the Ptolemaic dynasty. Cleopatra would have educated her children in matters of statecraft, diplomacy, and cultural heritage, equipping them with the skills necessary to govern Egypt effectively. Her relationships with her children were likely influenced by her own experiences and upbringing. Cleopatra herself was a product of a complex family dynamic, with power struggles and alliances defining her early life. It is possible that she sought to shield her children from the challenges she faced, providing them with a more stable and nurturing environment. The impact of motherhood on Cleopatra's decision-making is a topic of speculation and debate. As a mother, she would have had to balance the needs of her children with her responsibilities as a ruler. 
Cleopatra's decisions would have been influenced by the desire to protect her children's interests, ensuring their safety and secure futures. This consideration may have influenced her diplomatic alliances, strategic maneuvers, and even her choices in the face of defeat. Cleopatra's role as a mother, however, was not without its challenges. Her relationships with her children may have been strained by the political pressures and complex dynamics surrounding them. The competing claims to power and the shifting alliances of their parents would have created a turbulent environment for Cleopatra's children to grow up in. Despite the challenges, Cleopatra's role as a mother allowed her to leave a lasting impact on her children. Her guidance and influence would have shaped their futures, both as individuals and as potential leaders. Her commitment to their education and upbringing ensured the continuation of the Ptolemaic dynasty and the preservation of Egyptian culture and identity. Part 3, Cleopatra's Religious and Spiritual Beliefs Cleopatra's religious and spiritual beliefs played a significant role in her reign as the ruler of Egypt. As a pharaoh, she was expected to uphold and embody the religious traditions of ancient Egypt. Exploring her religious practices, her relationships with Egyptian deities, and her efforts to legitimize her rule through religious rituals and symbolism provides a deeper understanding of the intersection between politics and religion in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt was a deeply religious society, with a complex pantheon of deities and a belief system that permeated every aspect of life. Cleopatra, as a pharaoh, was not only a political leader but also the embodiment of the divine on earth. As such, she was expected to cultivate a close relationship with the gods and goddesses of Egypt and to perform religious rituals to ensure the well-being and prosperity of the kingdom. Cleopatra's religious practices would have involved participation in ceremonies, processions, and festivals dedicated to the gods. She would have made offerings, performed rituals, and sought the guidance and favor of the deities. Cleopatra's involvement in religious activities served to reinforce her role as a pharaoh and to establish her as a legitimate ruler in the eyes of the Egyptian people. One of the key aspects of Cleopatra's religious beliefs was her identification with the goddess Isis. Isis, the wife of Osiris and the mother of Horus, was one of the most revered deities in ancient Egypt. Cleopatra presented herself as the living embodiment of Isis, aligning herself with the nurturing and protective qualities associated with the goddess. By adopting the image of Isis, Cleopatra sought to emphasize her connection to the divine and to establish herself as a goddess queen, reflecting the ancient Egyptian tradition of divine kingship. Cleopatra's association with Isis went beyond symbolism. She actively engaged in the worship of Isis and supported the temples dedicated to the goddess. The Temple of Isis at Philae, located in southern Egypt, was particularly significant in Cleopatra's religious life. She undertook extensive restoration work on the temple, strengthening her ties to the cult of Isis and promoting her devotion to the goddess. In addition to her association with Isis, Cleopatra also sought to legitimize her rule through connections to other deities. She emphasized her lineage and claimed descent from the god Horus, further bolstering her divine status. Cleopatra's image was often depicted alongside traditional Egyptian iconography, such as the pharaoh's headdress, the double crown, and the symbols of sovereignty, further reinforcing her religious and political authority. Cleopatra's efforts to legitimize her rule through religious rituals and symbolism were not purely ceremonial. Religion and politics were deeply intertwined in ancient Egypt, and Cleopatra understood the importance of religious legitimacy in maintaining her position. By aligning herself with the traditional religious beliefs and practices of Egypt, Cleopatra sought to secure the support and loyalty of her subjects. Furthermore, Cleopatra's religious practices and connections to Egyptian deities had diplomatic implications. She recognized the power of religion in forging alliances and maintaining good relations with other rulers. 
Cleopatra cultivated relationships with foreign leaders, including Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, by presenting herself as a divinely ordained ruler and by showcasing the rich religious traditions of Egypt. Part 4, Cleopatra's Reputation and Portrayal in Historical Sources Cleopatra's reputation and portrayal in historical sources have been heavily influenced by the biases and agendas of ancient historians, making it challenging to discern an objective and accurate understanding of her character and achievements. Analyzing these sources and comparing them with contemporary accounts allows us to navigate the complexities of Cleopatra's image and shed light on the challenges she faced in establishing a fair and accurate historical narrative. The primary sources that provide information about Cleopatra's life and reign are mostly accounts written by Roman historians, such as Plutarch, Dio Cassius, and Appian. These historians lived long after Cleopatra's time and were influenced by their own political and cultural biases. Their accounts were shaped by the political climate of their era and the agenda of the Roman Empire. Cleopatra's portrayal in these ancient sources often emphasized her sexuality, seductive charm, and political ambitions. She was depicted as a femme fatale who used her allure to manipulate powerful men, such as Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, for her personal and political gain. These depictions served to reinforce Roman biases against Eastern cultures and to undermine Cleopatra's authority as a ruler. Furthermore, Cleopatra's reputation suffered from the propaganda disseminated by Octavian, later known as Emperor Augustus. After his victory over Antony and Cleopatra, Octavian sought to discredit his defeated rivals and strengthen his own claim to power. He portrayed Cleopatra as a foreign temptress who seduced Antony, leading to his downfall and the weakening of the Roman Republic. The biased accounts of ancient historians present a one-sided view of Cleopatra, focusing on her alleged sexual allure and manipulation. However, it is essential to critically evaluate these sources and consider alternative perspectives to obtain a more nuanced understanding of Cleopatra's character and achievements. Comparing the ancient sources with contemporary accounts can provide additional insights into Cleopatra's reputation. For instance, archaeological evidence, including inscriptions, statues, and coins, can provide a more objective perspective on Cleopatra's rule and her representation of herself as a ruler. These physical artifacts offer a glimpse into how Cleopatra wanted to be perceived by her subjects and future generations. Additionally, examining the accounts of Cleopatra's contemporaries, such as her courtiers, ambassadors, and visiting dignitaries, can shed light on her character and accomplishments. While these accounts may also be influenced by bias and personal agendas, they offer different perspectives that challenge the dominant narratives propagated by Roman historians. By critically evaluating the biases and agendas of ancient historians and considering alternative sources, we can begin to piece together a more accurate portrayal of Cleopatra. It becomes apparent that her political acumen, intelligence, and strategic abilities were significant factors in her rise to power and her efforts to maintain the independence and prosperity of Egypt. Furthermore, recognizing the influence of Roman propaganda and biases against powerful women from the East allows us to question the validity of the traditional narrative and appreciate the complexities of Cleopatra's character. She was not merely a seductress but a formidable leader who navigated the treacherous political landscape of her time. Part 5, Cleopatra's Impact on the Status of Women in Power Cleopatra's impact on the status of women in power cannot be overstated. Her rise to power and her position as a female ruler in a patriarchal society challenged traditional gender norms and had far-reaching implications for the perception and status of women in leadership roles. Exploring the ways in which Cleopatra defied societal expectations, the reactions she elicited, and the lasting impact of her reign provides a broader context for understanding her historical significance and the advancement of women in positions of power. In ancient Egypt, as in many other ancient societies, 
women were typically relegated to subordinate roles in both public and private spheres. They were expected to be wives, mothers, and caretakers, with limited opportunities for education and participation in politics. However, Cleopatra shattered these expectations and emerged as a powerful political figure who ruled Egypt in her own right. Cleopatra's reign challenged traditional notions of gender roles and power dynamics. She assumed the role of a pharaoh, a position traditionally held by men, and wielded authority and influence over Egypt's political, economic, and military affairs. Her intelligence, political acumen, and determination allowed her to navigate the treacherous political landscape and maintain her independence as a female ruler. Cleopatra's reign sparked a range of reactions, both within Egypt and in the wider Mediterranean world. Her assertiveness and confidence in her abilities were met with admiration by some, while others viewed her as a threat to established power structures and norms. The Roman propaganda machine sought to undermine Cleopatra's authority by portraying her as a manipulative seductress, using gendered stereotypes to undermine her legitimacy and power. However, Cleopatra's position as a powerful female ruler also inspired admiration and fascination. Her intelligence, charisma, and ability to command the loyalty of powerful men challenged prevailing gender stereotypes and demonstrated that women could wield power effectively. Cleopatra's presence in a male-dominated political arena challenged the notion that leadership and authority were inherently masculine traits. Cleopatra's impact on the status of women in power extended beyond her own reign. Her example paved the way for future generations of women who aspired to leadership roles. She demonstrated that women were capable of governing and making important decisions, challenging the notion that women were inherently inferior or unsuited for positions of power. The legacy of Cleopatra's reign can be seen in the subsequent rise of prominent female leaders throughout history. From Queen Elizabeth I of England to Catherine the Great of Russia, Cleopatra's example served as a powerful symbol of women's capabilities and influenced the aspirations and achievements of women leaders across different eras and cultures. Moreover, Cleopatra's impact on the representation of women in positions of power can be seen in art, literature, and popular culture. Her story has been romanticized, dramatized, and reimagined in countless works, often highlighting her intelligence, charisma, and determination. These portrayals have contributed to a broader cultural understanding of women's leadership and challenged traditional gender norms. However, it is important to recognize that Cleopatra's reign, while groundbreaking, was not a complete overturning of gender hierarchies. Her position as a female ruler was exceptional, and societal expectations for women in leadership roles remain deeply entrenched. It would take centuries for women to gain more widespread recognition and acceptance as leaders in political, social, and economic spheres. We've now reached the end of our journey today, thank you for letting the tales of old be your backdrop and remember, history isn't just about the past, it's about understanding our present and shaping our future.